아, 아, <laughs> hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and I apologize for what you had to listen to at the beginning of this episode. But in this episode, episode 38, I'm going to talk about how we hear different pitches. And what do I mean by different pitches? Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. I shouldn't be putting you through that. But that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I just made a few different sounds and they were different pitches. And we want to look at how your brain is able to distinguish the different pitches based on what is happening inside the ear. So let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we're looking at the ear. And we've looked at this figure in the last episode and we looked at one that was similar to it in the episode before that. And where we ended off last time, we had a signal coming in and we spoke about how the malleus, incus, and stapes are involved in transferring that signal to the cochlea. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this cochlea and I'm going to roll it out and just kind of extend it. So we're not going to look at it like how it looks here, kind of like a snail, we're going to look at it as if it were just rolled out. So let's go to the next picture. And here we have it. So we have the cochlea that we unrolled and now it extends right here. And what you'll see is here we have a membrane that we call the basilar membrane and that here is the writing for that right here. So this is the basilar membrane. And what you're going to notice about the basilar membrane is it's thinner over here than it is over here. So at this end, it's significantly thinner. And as it goes away from the oval window where the malleus, incus, and stapes connects, as it goes away from that section, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker until it's thickest right here at this end. And what you're going to see here is we have a number of different frequencies that are associated with these different sections. Here we have a 25 hertz, which is a low frequency. And as we come over to the th thinner section, we have higher frequencies up here to 1600 hertz. And it goes all the way up here to about 20 kilohertz. Okay, so we go as low as 25 hertz and as high as 20 kilohertz. Now, if you've taken a physics class, you know that higher pitches are the result of higher frequencies. Forgive my writing there again. Okay, so higher pitches are the result of higher frequencies and lower pitches are a result of lower frequencies. And we're talking about sound waves, the frequency of the sound wave. Now, if a certain sound comes into the air, causes the tympanic membrane to vibrate, the malleus, incus, and stapes vibrate, and that causes the oval window to vibrate, that's going to cause fluid inside the cochlea to vibrate. Now, depending on the frequency, it's going to cause a different section of the basilar membrane to vibrate. Now, is it easier to move a thinner piece of membrane or a thicker piece of membrane? The answer to that question should be quite obvious. It's much easier to move a thinner piece of membrane than it is to move a thicker piece of membrane. So in order for it to vibrate down here, we need more force. And you're going to get a greater force from lower frequencies. Now just think about it. If you're in front of a, a huge speaker, I mean massive speaker, and uh, there's sounds coming out of that speaker, you're playing some music, and you're playing music that has a lot of high frequencies. For example, something like this. Now, 
Now, if you're standing in front of that huge speaker that's playing that nice little soft, high frequency music, it's not going to have a huge effect on you. But if you start playing something with a lot of bass, something like this, that's going to cause you to move. You might even feel the wind of the speaker vibrating and causing the air to uh, be pushed and you might actually feel that. That's because as you have lower frequencies, the lower the frequency, the greater the force that comes along with that frequency. So here, in order to cause this to vibrate, we're going to have a lower frequency sound, which makes sense. And that's why we're showing 25 kilohertz here. And the closer up we go where we have the thinner membrane, we can cause that to vibrate with a higher frequency tone. Now, if the frequency is low enough, that might actually cause this entire basilar membrane to vibrate. The take-home message is, depending on the frequency, we're going to get different regions of the basilar membrane vibrating. This then sends a signal to the brain. And depending on where that signal is coming from, if that signal comes from here and it goes to the brain, that is going to tell the brain it's coming from a low frequency and the brain is going to interpret that as a lower pitch. If it's coming from over here, it's going to the brain and that's going to tell the brain that it's coming from this region which is associated with a higher frequency and the brain is going to interpret that as a higher pitch. So there is a direct relationship between where it vibrates and where in the brain is being stimulated and depending on where it's stimulated and where the signal comes from the brain is going to be able to distinguish between the different pitches now you're hearing me speak and me speaking right now is a result of a number of different frequencies combining together and so there's going to be a complex interaction here and different parts are going to be vibrating in different ways and the brain is going to take all of that and paint the picture of the sound that's coming from my voice well that's coming from the speakers that you're listening to this video on and you can easily distinguish between my ha ah! and my ha ah! I hope that wasn't too painful and I hope it makes sense that's really all for this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And of course, you can always visit the website at www.interactive-biology.com for more biology videos and other resources. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.